Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Fluctus Channel. In 2007, the United States Air Force officially introduced the General Atomics MQ-9 Reaper. With its very first precision airstrike in Afghanistan, this advanced drone proved to be a formidable replacement for the MQ-1 Predator, one of the first ever combat drones. The MQ-9 was the first unmanned hunter-killer drone and was designed to accommodate the high altitude performance and increased endurance capabilities required for modern combat. Through a series of flight tests and touch-and-go landings, it was found that the aircraft could reach heights of over 50,000 feet, stay aloft for 14 hours, and had a range of more than 1,200 miles. In July 2008, the aircraft was considered operational after its deployment to Iraq. But what really set the Reaper apart from its predecessors was its armament. A fully loaded Reaper could carry up to four AGM-114 Hellfire missiles, two Paveway laser-guided bombs, and multiple other ordinances, depending on the mission. The primary purpose of the MQ-9 as an unmanned aircraft is to make sure the pilots of the USAF can exhibit their skills and perform missions without being in harm's way. This is where the ingenious ground cockpit comes in. The MQ-9 cockpit is a state-of-the-art control center built for two people, a pilot and a sensor operator who manages the various high-tech radar and photography equipment. The air crews that operate these missions are known as RPAs, or Remotely Piloted Aircraft Airmen. These teams include a variety of specialists, including intelligence analysts, maintenance crews, and air traffic controllers. From the comfort of these rooms, which also double as training facilities, Pilots are able to engage enemies more than 1,000 miles away without endangering themselves or their comrades. Though its primary function is attack and defense, the MQ-9 Reaper has some extremely advanced avionics and visualization systems. These include a multi-spectral targeting system, a Lynx 2 radar, and an onboard camera capable of reading a car's license plate from up to two miles away. The Raytheon AN AAS 52 targeting sensor suite includes color and monochrome functions, as well as infrared and laser rangefinder functions. Since their introduction, the 300 or so Reapers operated by the U.S. military have undergone several upgrades. This was done to ensure they have the best possible offensive, defensive, and surveillance systems. Among the most important tasks was to deploy a Sparrowhawk Parasite aircraft a smaller UAV capable of jamming enemy radar and disrupting other detection capabilities. Though they are often considered the future of aerial combat, drones like the MQ-9 are not inexpensive. In fact, the entire MQ-9 program had an estimated cost of $1.6 billion, while each drone costs around $32 million. 
This is the reason why RPA crews undergo such extensive training before being allowed to pilot an actual Reaper. Both the pilot and sensor operator are tasked with performing missions inside the simulator, which provides a very accurate approximation of what it's like to fly the real thing. Known as an MJAT or Mallet JSIL aircrew trainer, the plug and play simulator is compatible with the Reaper control room. This means air crews can fly simulated missions using the actual dials, screens, and controls they would find if they controlled a real Reaper. Though Reaper drones don't boast any capabilities worthy of pitting them against modern fighter jets, they are actually more costly to operate. Even with their low weight and simple 900 horsepower turboprop, fly hour cost estimates indicate that each drone costs around $3,624 per hour to fly. Maintenance costs, on the other hand, are around $5 million per year. That's about on par with an A-10 or F-16C. Maintenance generally focuses on keeping the engine in top working order, but it's also crucial that the communication and sensor arrays that allow the drone to communicate with its operators be rigorously maintained at all times. And while there's no telling if or when manned aircraft will be replaced with drones, there's no underestimating just how successful the MQ-9 program has been. With its ability to adjust to different mission types and stay in the air for the better part of a day, the Reaper is a formidable opponent for the United States enemies and a great friend to allies fighting on the ground. Unmanned aerial vehicles have never seemed so full of potential. Not only are multiple air forces around the world evaluating different types of drones, but various branches of the U.S. military are attempting to implement drone programs that specifically suit their unique needs. A perfect example of this is the Northrop Grumman X-47B. This unmanned combat aerial vehicle is specifically designed for aircraft carrier-based operations. It strongly resembles a scaled-down version of the B-2 bomber, thanks to its tailless, blended wing body design. The X-47B first took flight in 2011, and since then, has enjoyed a number of successful trials aboard U.S. aircraft carriers like the George H.W. Bush. At 38 feet long and boasting a wingspan of 62 feet, the X-47B is roughly the same size as many of the other aircraft that operate aboard carriers. To help save space, Northrop Grumman designed the aircraft with foldable wing sections. The primary purpose of the X-47B is to provide reconnaissance and to penetrate protective airspace where it might launch attacks against air and ground forces.
With a top speed of 690 miles per hour and the ability to carry up to 4,500 pounds of variable ordnance, the X-47B can engage various targets. The first successful sea-based launch and retrieval of an X-47B drone took place on September 18, 2013. The drone was controlled by a mission operator aboard the ship and participated in 16 precision approaches, five wave offs, nine touch-and-go landings, and three catapult launches. The drone also took off using a blast deflector for the first time. This proved it could take off while not affecting any operations going on behind it. These tests continued well into the year 2017, when the U.S. military ultimately shelved the program. Despite its success, it remains unclear if the X-47B is the final phase of the program or merely a stepping stone toward a better aircraft. Regardless of where the program goes, the two existing X-47Bs were truly revolutionary in terms of their performance For instance, the X-47B does not come with a sophisticated control room like that of the MQ-9 Reaper. Instead, it's flown using a handheld control system, not unlike what one might use for a remote control airplane. Once in the air, Pre-programmed functions allow the aircraft to operate semi-autonomously, regardless of whether the mission is one of surveillance, attack, or defense. Regardless of what happens with the X-47 project, the U.S. Navy remains extremely interested in drone technology. After all, flying full-size jets and helicopters is extremely expensive and time-intensive. With semi-autonomous drones, ships of all kinds can enjoy an added layer of protection. Currently, multiple vessels in the fleet are equipped with RQ-8A and MQ-8 Fire Scout reconnaissance helicopters, some of which have been tested for air-to-air -air and air-to-ground combat. Of all the milestones in the X-47B's history, perhaps the most important one came on April 22, 2015. This represented the first time in history that an unmanned aircraft conducted autonomous aerial refueling. The maneuver took place over the east coast of the United States and featured an X-47B and an Omega K-707 tanker aircraft. Though mid-air refueling has been around for decades, the idea of a robotically piloted plane being able to refuel without intervention is a major breakthrough in engineering. That was at time 55, so it's staying pretty strong. It may go over again. After all, it indicates that sometime in the very near future, drones may be able to patrol the skies almost indefinitely, engaging in unassisted offensive and defensive actions not limited by the endurance of human beings. No matter their purpose, there's no question that drones and other unmanned vehicles are the waves of the future when it comes to tomorrow's military. That's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our new content. See you next time.